looking ahead to the trading week beginning June 5th, we have to kind of reassess the yield curve and what the yield curve looks like going into the quiet period. Next week, we enter the quiet period for the Federal Reserve for the June Fed meeting and how we ended last week with that fairly strong headline jobs number that also showed easing wage pressures. There's the probability of a rate hike climbed a little bit, but the highest probability still sits with the month of June, the June meeting, being a skip or a pause, depending on who you're talking to. When you look at the way that Philly Fed President Patrick Harker stated it, he was inclined to skip a June rate hike, but his actual quote was, I'm in the camp of increasingly coming into this meeting thinking we should really skip, but the data due on Friday about the US jobs market could change my mind. Did it change his mind? We won't know because you're in the quiet period and the yield curve actually moved substantially in the wrong direction on Friday, moving back into the negative 80s with the rise that we saw in yields last week. So you need to keep an eye on that on the heels of a NASDAQ that's now six weeks in a row higher, the uh, S&P and the Russell up three weeks in a row, and the Dow is now up two of the last three weeks. We also have an OPEC meeting next week. That's a little bit different. Early in the, me in the week, we get a meeting of the OPEC members and their allies who may consider cutting production again. Now, we had some pretty volatile moves last week in crude oil, and Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman said late the previous week that shorts needed to look out because he made them ouch in April. He actually used the word ouch, and they may be ouching again, but he didn't have to show his cards. So does that mean they're going to cut production again at this June 4th meeting? We don't know, but we're still looking for some sort of statement from them that could potentially push oil prices higher. And then that has to do with inflation, has to do with other commodities. So there's a lot going on there. It's a pretty big wild card. So keep an eye on that OPEC meeting. Now, data and earnings next week. Earnings, we only have a grand total of about 43 companies with market caps over 500 million. Some big consumer names like Brown Foreman, JM Smuckers, and the Campbell Soup Company. Industrials like Ferguson PLC and Planet Labs and tech companies like Sienna Corp and DocuSign, but no massive major names. Data, Sunday, Cation Composite and Services PMI in China. Monday, we got the same thing in the UK and the EU from S&P Global. And then we got ISM Services PMI in the US. Tuesday, we have an Australian interest rate decision and EU retail sales. Wednesday, Canadian interest rate decision and Japanese final GDP. Thursday, EU first quarter GDP revisions, jobless claims in the US and inflation figures in China, and then Friday, Canadian employment data. So a slowish day to week as the US is concerned, but globally, pretty big day to week.